Hello and thanks for watching this Acumatica video by Cloud9 ERP Solutions. Today we're going to talk about recurring documents. Acumatica gives you the ability to generate recurring documents, whether it's financial journal transaction, whether it's a recurring invoice, AR invoice, or a recurring AP bill. You can create a batch of documents and have them fire off on a certain schedule. So let's get started. The first one we'll do is under journal transactions. So we'll go into new journal transaction. Click the plus here. And maybe this is a GL transaction we want to do every month. So we'll give it a, a date. This date will get overridden with our schedule. And maybe this is an adjustment for rent. Maybe we own the property and we just want to make an allowance for rent here. So we'll pick our GL account. We'll give it an amount. And maybe there's an asset account that we want to show this balance as it continues to accrue. So maybe it's other current assets, the extra 500. So now in the balance state, Acumatica has different states. There's the hold state. When it's checked, it's balanced right before it can be released. And then it's released. Before we release it, we have a couple of options here to create our schedule. If we go into actions, we can add it to the schedule here. If we have a bunch of documents, a bunch of transactions that we want to add to the same schedule, then what we could do is leave this balanced. We can create another one. So if I hit the plus button here, I put it in the clipboard, I'll hit the paste button here to paste. And maybe this is adjustment for taxes, property taxes. So instead of this rent or lease expense, we'll pick another account here and see if we have a tax account in our system. And we'll use this one. And maybe these amounts are different. Yes, the taxes could be more than the rent. So now we have two transactions that are in the balanced state. If we go back, we can see them, they're right here. Now if we go to finance and we go into recurring transaction profiles, I'll open it up in another tab. As I said before, from this transaction, I can add it to a schedule. If I do that, that's fine. It'll open up this recurring transaction profile and it'll have that one journal transaction here. But in this case, we're gonna go and create our recurring transaction and add both batches into this recurring document. So the first thing is, is the start date. We'll probably start this maybe a month ago because we forgot to do it. So 0501, maybe it never expires. Maybe it's got an expiration date. That's our option here. We want to execute it how many times before it stops. So these are two options that give us the ability to stop the schedule so it doesn't run forever. So I'll say five here. And then under the schedule type, we can say, do we want to run it monthly? Do we want to run it by financial period or daily? You have a bunch of different options here that allows you to run it at a frequency. I'm going to say run it at the first day of the month, every month. We can give a description here, my monthly GL transactions. Okay. And then over here, we can add the batches that we want. So we can see there's a bunch that are scheduled here. I'll sort by descending to find the ones I just created. And we'll add this one, 1383. And then we'll add this one as well, 1384. So these are the two transactions that will run when my schedule goes off. Now that we've seen that, you have a couple of different options here as well. You can open up the recurring transaction and run it right now. And what that'll do is it'll run it and fire off and create these transactions. But typically speaking, 
we would run them through our process screen under generate recurring transactions. So if we open that up, now at the top of the screen, you notice the date. This is the execution date that it's going to run. This is a date filter. If I go back in time, maybe to March 3rd, notice I don't see any recurring transaction documents that need to run because we've gone back to 3-3 and really the only thing we need to run is this monthly interest payment because it was last executed on 2-1. As we start to go ahead, so maybe May 1, you could see our other transactions and again, that's a filter for this last executed date. The other thing is, is stop on execution date or stop after number of executions. So what Acumatica can do, if we select this, it'll run from the last executed date to the 5-1 date. So if this is monthly, that means it's going to run for February, March, April, and the May 1st. But the default is to stop after one execution. And that's an option there because you may want to run and get caught up or you may only want to run one at a time so you can manage it. So in this case I will do stop after number of executions one for this one. So we'll run this one. Now if we go back to our journal transactions, we go to our list, you can see monthly interest payment ran three times. Our adjustment for property taxes and rent ran once as well. Notice these transactions, the one we originally created, changed their status to schedule. That's because they're associated to a schedule and they're not releasable anymore. So just keep that in mind so that it's not confusing. But these are the two transactions that we ran for our schedule. And then these were the ones that got caught up. And if we take a look at them, You'll notice Acumatica didn't use the 6-1 date. It used the May 1st date because that's the execution date of the schedule. Acumatica also gives you original batch number. So if you want to look at the original schedule, you can see it there. Now, lastly, if I go back to the transaction profile that I was looking at, this is the one we created, my monthly GL transactions, the schedule and all that. These are the documents that are part of that list that need to run. If I go over to generated documents, Acumatica will keep a running idea of all of the documents that were generated because of this recurring transaction. And you can see the status here. Now again, if I wanted to, I could go into finance, release transactions. And I can see all my different transactions here. I can select all of them or release all. I'll just select them manually and release them. They're released. Now if I go over to my recurring transactions, you can see that they're now posted to the GL. Now the same thing applies to receivables. We got your invoices here. We'll show all. We got our invoices here. We got our recurring transactions. And under processes, we have generate recurring transactions. Same thing goes with payables. So if we go over to payables and we create a new bill, Give it a document number. We'll pick insurance. I don't have an insurance in here, but we'll pick a utility. Understanding that the utility always changes every month, but we'll treat this as a insurance for the example. So it's $500. We'll save it. Take it off hold so that it can be seen by the schedule. In this case, we'll go actions, add to schedule instead of creating a schedule and then drawing it in. So when we do that, as I mentioned before, Acumatica opens up the recurring transaction. It hasn't been saved yet, but it has this batch, this bill in it, document list, they call it instead of batch. And we'll say monthly insurance, even though I know it's Mid-City Utilities. We'll put no limit on it. It'll also be monthly on the 1st and we'll save it and again now we can run it now notice the error we're getting here the generation date for this task is greater than the current business date so let's take a look at this our business date is 6-4 but if we take a look we're supposed to run this on the first of the month 
So the next first of the month is 7-1. So therefore, Acumatica says, well, wait a sec. You can't run this yet. We're not ready to go. So it's not going to let you. But if we jump out, and I'm going to go to this other screen because it shows a warning that's interesting. And we go ahead and move this execution date to 7-1. Acumatica shows our new recurring document. But it gives you a warning. It says the next generation date is greater than the business date, the current business date. So it's giving you a warning here. Now in Acumatica, if we go in here and we change the business date, you have to have the rights, of course. So we'll change it to 7-1. And click OK. Now you'll see this transaction, but you don't get the warning because essentially you've told Acumatica, this is good, this is today's business date. So again, if I go to this screen, I can schedule this screen to run automatically, by the way. I can add this to a schedule so it runs my recurring document without my help. But I'll say run all here. It's only one. And if I go back to my bills, I can see the bill that was created right here. And then once you've looked at it, you could decide to release it. You can release it from the batch release AP documents. Those are both options. So that's recurring documents in Acumatica. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Have a great day.